I think the biggest impact that prescribers face in getting access to dupilumab for patients who really qualify for the drug is is strictly uh, economic and payer based, and you know we have developed a, you know a, a kind of a routine system, and then we have some assistance from uh, uh, our pharmaceutical um, the ph from some pharmacies to you know help us along with the really time consuming process that is prior authorization. Um, so it, it hopefully it'll be easier, but you know the impact really or, or, or what the hesitation that um, most providers have, I think, has mo much more to do with access than it does with really safety. Um, but I think for any new drug, there are factions of providers. You know, some people it's just like with technology. Some people are early adopters and some people are late adopters, and that's just much more of an emotional thing, I think, than it is uh, anything that's supported by data that we do or don't have. Um, but, you know, for some people, until we have very long-term data, they're not going to feel comfortable with any new drug in children. And other people recognize the risk of the disease. And that's, that, from my perspective, um, that is the really important issue. You know, there's the risk of the drug and the risk of the disease. And people tend to focus on the risk of drugs and what side effects are. And they tend to not really focus on the risk of the disease. And we've already spoken about the all the atopic and non-atopic morbidities that, that go with atopic dermatitis. And so having a, a medication that can turn that off and perhaps modify the disease, that's, that's the risk that I focus on, and that's why I, I embrace a new drug like, like dupilumab. But for other people, you know, it's, the, it's an individual decision. I think for uh, physicians with this new biologic on the market, there's a lot of educating that we need to do. Uh, physicians need to get comfortable with uh, what the uh, treatment is and who it's appropriate for. Uh, the good news about this particular biologic is there are no other testing uh, that needs to be done along with it. Uh, but again, I think it is educating uh, the physicians and, and the patients and the caregivers about what this treatment is, how to get it, not to give up, uh, and to continue to have hope. But we are um, on uh, climbing a big mountain there to ensure that uh, all of those stakeholders uh, involved in the care of an atopic dermatitis patient have the tools and resources they need to do their very best. Well, by the time you get to be an adolescent and you already have, uh, and you still are suffering from atopic dermatitis, the approach is, I think, different than when you have very young children who um, using topical treatment, I think, is more doable. Once you get to be an adolescent, it becomes much more challenging to do daily topical treatment. So considering systemic options, I think, is really important. Um, we didn't have a chance to talk about the standard systemic options that people use and use probably more in adolescent children than they do in younger children, like systemic systemic corticosteroids or uh, antihistamines and repeated courses of antibiotics. And those were an, an old paradigm, and people use those things, again, off-label because they didn't have anything else. But those are treatments that, that may actually potentiate the long-term course of the disease. They certainly can put out the fire of flares, but they don't give you long-term control. So for adolescents, I think it's more important to help them with uh, a, a, an agent that can really overcome the burden of their disease. I've actually seen uh, teenagers whose parents were really attentive to their needs with topical treatment who did everything. They did everything up until the time they were ready to go off to college. And because these adolescents were so dependent on their parents taking care of them, uh, once they got to college, it was the primary reason that they couldn't stay. My recommendation for physicians caring for adolescents is ask them. Just ask them the question, how are you? How are you doing, buddy? How's your atopic dermatitis? How's it affecting your life? A simple question that you see that it has much more than a skin deep impact, that you recognize that this has um, really changed their lives and that you as the physician or um, nurse practitioner or other uh, healthcare provider um, care. And that knowing that answer is important to the treatment plan that you're gonna have together.
So ask about the itch, ask about the sleep, and ask just how they are. Getting access uh, to the new biologic to pill them up on the market is uh, extremely burdensome. We hear both anecdotally and now we're seeing in the literature that the prior authorization steps as well as the step edits or step therapy are delaying treatment a great deal and much of the access is being denied and um, many practitioners are shying away from prescribing this because it is an undue burden on their practice. Uh, it has many layers. So we at the National Eczema Association in particular are working uh, very hard to advocate for obviously appropriate, appropriate treatments but also policies that are appropriate. The most important thing is that the healthcare provider and the patient and the family make a decision about the treatment. And we don't want barriers and um, too many steps put <laughs> in that way.